Hello and uh, welcome to another beer review and today we're going to be doing a continuation of the kind of Belgian beer kind of series and it's a continuation of Aldi versus the big brands so we'll be looking at uh, well I'll show you again didn't go to plan <laughs> I wanted two big bottles and I ended up having to buy a four pack of the whole garden but anyway this is what we've got Whole Garden versus Hoflegen, Hoflegen, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But uh, this is from Aldi, and of course this is this big brand. So, what we're going to be doing is to see if they're actually any good. Now, the Whole Garden, for a four pack, it was about £5.50 or something like that, I think it was. Mm. Which, uh, Mm, it's 4.9%, they're 330ml bottles, I don't think it's probably the best, but I've always found Whole Garden, uh, Whole Garden uh, kind of overpriced anyway. I remember the last time I drank Whole Garden was in, uh, was in London with my brother-in-law many, many years ago, and it was ridiculous. I mean, it was like, almost drinking, you know, half pint glasses, I think it was, and I think charging about over five quid a glass you're thinking you thieving bastards you know what I mean but anyway so we've got this so it's uh, 330 ml it's £5.50 for a four pack it's 4.9 now it's naturally cloudy it's a proper uh, um, wheat beer brewed with coriander and orange peel so it is Oh, no, 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 they're giving you they're giving you a way of how to pour it. This will be interesting. So apparently you're supposed to chill it, and then you're supposed to pour two thirds of it, which isn't very much because it's a 330 ml bottle. And then uh, once you've done that, you have to give it a good swirl at the bottom, and then top off and enjoy. There you go. My goodness. Almost 600 years ago, the Belgian village of Hogarden. A band of monks experimented by adding, I can't even read that, bloody hell, oddball botanicals from halfway around the world to the traditional wheat beer. A recipe inspired blah 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 blah. It's just pissing ball. I and mean, what's this one? Oh, we've actually got some spiel in the back of this one. Now, the Hovely Gym or Hoffigan. Um it was 2 99 for 750ml so I would probably say it's not so bad price wise um, Hoffigan is a Belgian craft beer which has a refreshing taste and a fruity slightly smoked aroma the unique blend of herbs and spices gives the beer its delicious flavour and individual character Hoffigan wheat is fermented with its own yeast strain of high fermentation which gives a smoked aroma together with a perceptible fruitiness so there you go and uh, this is 5% compared to 4.9 so you're getting a little bit more alcohol in this one so what we'll do is we'll pour this out first Ooh. so we will Ooh. so we'll pour this out now they're saying Two thoughts. Right, there we go. I've got the swirl going. I've got the swirl going. Look at that. Oh, lucky boy. What a lot of shit. Anyway. Right, there you go. Would you like a flake with that, sir? Oh, shit, it's looking. That's done fucking well, isn't it? Well, there you go. You've got your head. There you go. Marvellous. Now let's do this one, like I always say, uh, don't take the ceiling out when you're doing it and once you put the metal bit off and you put the cork in your hand, it's plain sailing. I know that, oh crikey, I know it's plain sailing for, oh, 
Or do you reckon? Anyway. <laughs> Let's pour this out. Funny enough, they don't have a pouring kind of uh, guide. They can just say, just pour the fucking in. You know what I mean? So, there we go. So, let's see. I'm going to pour it to the kind of same level. And as you can see, there's a bit of a colour difference. This is lighter, which is the whole garden. And this is the Hoflogen. Hoflogen. I, if you pronounce it Flemish, it should be Hoflogen. But, which is more kind of closer to the Dutch kind of pronunciation. But anyway. So, let's start off with smelling in the whole garden. Again, you're getting that grain, that kind of wheat. Um, when we did the... What was it? Uh, the Leff and uh, the St. Pierre. One we did the last time, that St. Pierre actually just edged it and gave out the one nil lead. It had kind of strong green wheat smells and uh, and aromas and of course also with flavours as well. Um, now, some of these beers will contain a malted wheat, some of them don't. And uh, the ones that don't, they will use yeast and uh, barley just to kind of get that more kind of grainish flavour and uh, they will also obviously work with the hops as well to do that. But yeah. I'm getting wheat, grain, kind of wheat germ, get that kind of thing, you know, and uh, slight sweetness, and that's really it. I'm not really getting any fruitiness. They're claiming it's uh, it's got nice botanicals. Oh. Never seen that. Oh, I've never seen that. And uh, yeah, it's got supposed to be. Coriander and orange peel. Well, I'm not really getting any of that just now, but they might be more present in the, in the flavour rather than the aroma. So this is a Hoflegen. Mmm, this is different. Darker, quite darker, still cloudy. I'm getting a bit more caramel. I'm getting a bit more kind of sweet malt, kind of ever so like caramel. I suppose a little bit of grain and wheat, but nowhere near as much as uh, the whole garden. So yeah, so let's start off with the big brand first. See what it's like. Yeah, that's that whole garden flavour. Um, I'll be honest, whole garden isn't really my first choice for a wheat beer. Um, so it isn't. I just feel that it's overhyped and I feel that the flavour just isn't deep enough. I just feel that it's not kind of developed enough. I always find it's very light. It's like wheat beer for beginners. That's what it kind of always kind of makes me feel like. and. Again, I haven't run this for, for years, and I mean year probably, or it's going to be closer, 15 years plus. And I still get that. Um, let's break it down. I'm getting right. You're getting a bit of wheat to start with, a bit of wheat, bit of grain, and uh, a slight sweetness, ever so slight sweetness. I'm struggling to say sweetness because I've had some work done in my teeth, kind of temporary work, and it's moved some things, and my tongue is really struggling to try and find its kind of footholding in the back of them. It's like, <laughs> And uh, I sound like Sean Connery to a certain degree. I've been spending a lot of time teaching my dog to shit. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, getting back to the beer. I'm sure people are glad of that. You get a slight, slight sweetness. Oh my God. And uh, there's a bit of wheat and a bit of grain there. And it's moving on to the kind of mid tongue. 
the grain is kind of dying down a wee bit and you are starting to get a little bit, maybe a bit of coriander coming through, maybe getting a little bit of some of these add-in kind of botanicals. Just a little bit kind of accent flavours, but you still have that underlying sweetness. So you've got the kind of dominant flavour of in the mid tongue, you've got a bit of wheat and grain, you've got a bit of these kind of botanicals. Hard to distinguish what the botanicals are, they're not really kind of strong enough to identify, oh that's that flavour and that flavour, but there is these kind of flavours that you're getting that aren't really normal within the beer. And of course you've got that little underlying sweetness. And then of course it goes into the kind of aftertaste, and the aftertaste, it, the kind of grain kind of remains, the sweetness kind of drops off, and you're just getting a kind of slight bitterness, which I don't know, might come from the orange peel or whatever, or the hops or whatever, but you are getting a slight bitterness, not a strong bitterness, just a kind of light one. But you do notice it because the sweetness kind of tails off quite quickly, and then you're kind of left with kind of the grain, kind of the grain and wheat, and a little bit of... Uh, bitterness there as well and I think that's why you notice the bitterness just that little bit more because the sweetness dissipates very quickly and you're left with that. Now when I'm saying grain and wheat all the way through it's very light. I feel that uh, the kind of grainy kind of wheatish flavours you're getting from the, say, the left blonde is actually stronger than this. So there you go. After the mouth is acclimatising, we get some slight lemon kind of little kind of hints in the mid tongue as well. Just that kind of as your mouth acclimatises, you can maybe just slightly identify. Which again, slightly lemony kind of uh, slight kind of citrusy freshness, but very very light would be what you probably get from the coriander because coriander ground coriander seed does give you that kind of slight kind of um, lemony kind of. Um, freshness not not strong you know, it's just to give that little hint of kind of citrusy lemony kind of freshness that can add to like cooking and things like that so i think that's what you're probably getting and uh yeah i mean it's it's nice enough but i just feel it's just not strong enough in any of the kind of flavor profiles it's too gentle too gentle you know it needs to kind of get a bit more rough and uh have a safety word written in the back label and <laughs> right let's get on to this Hopefully you can see what it's like. Right, I'm, I'm getting kind of caramel and malt straight away rather than wheat or grain, but let, let's see what it tastes like. Wow. Right. That's a strange one. Because straight away when I first get it in the front of the mouth I'm getting I'm getting light malt and light caramel to start with Let, let's break this down let's try and kind of acclimatize the mouth to it Right, what we're getting here, it's uh, at the start you are getting a little bit of sweetness, you get maltiness, kind of caramel flavours, but it's not too sweet. It's moving off on that and you're starting to get a little bit of grain, very light, very light wheat, a lot lighter than the, the whole garden, and I'm already saying the whole garden is too light anyway, it's just too delicate and too soft. This is even softer and you're still having a little bit of kind of caramel tones. There's a, a light underlying sweetness. I would probably say that the whole garden is actually slightly sweeter than the Hoflegan. And then it moves on from that to the aftertaste and it just really just kind of disappears very quickly. There's no real kind of aftertaste. It just kind of fucks off basically is the best way to say it. Just like, you know, you're thinking, what happened? Did I miss it? You know, it's like and you're taking another step, you're thinking, no, I didn't, it's just not there. So the aftertaste is everything just kind of like, dissipates and disappears very, very quickly um, to the point that there's no kind of real lingering kind of. In fact, it's a bit of an anticlimax in some ways because 
it's just not delivering in the flavours. Right, I'm maybe getting some slight lemony there in my tongue as well. It's the same as I'm getting with the whole garden, but because it's slight lemony and you get that kind of caramel kind of undertone in the mid tongue coming from the, the front of the mouth. And it doesn't exactly particularly mix very well. It just, you know, the, the flavour profiles don't kind of really match. They're kind of like clashing with each other. I'll be totally honest, it's quite an easy one. I would say I prefer whole garden to the Hovelian. Um, I mean, it's an alright beer, but I just feel it's lacking in flavour. And the flavour it does have don't really kind of work together. The kind of the flavour profiles kind of clash a little bit. Whereas the whole garden, it's just a, it's a nicer flavour profile and quite refreshing as well. I mean, there is a nice kind of crispness to it, which again, because of the caramel kind of flavouring, it's kind of taking away that kind of acidity and kind of crispness. Because to get the crispness and the dryness, you need a little bit of astringent, you need a little bit of acidity kind of to it. You're not getting that the Hufflegan, so again you're getting it's like a, a confused ale. And that's what it feels like. It feels like we're talking about a wheat ale rather than a wheat beer. It's a bit confused and I think there's a bit too much malt going on in it. Which is unusual for me to say that because of course I love malt. But it's got to be in the right format, isn't it? So right, marks out of ten, what would I give? Whole garden. Well, I'll be totally honest, I mean, it's a nice enough beer. I just wish it was a bit more wheaty. Um, but I think maybe it's because it wants to try and get some of the other subtle flavours, you know, present as well, that maybe that's why they kind of dial it back a bit. So there is wheatness, but of course, you're getting the kind of wheatiness and grain more from the smell than really from the actual flavour. But there's some other nice kind of little accent flavours there. Nice kind of underlying sweetness and a little bit of bitterness at the end. But there's also that little bit of acidity that gives a little bit of crispness as well and a little bit of dryness which which is nice and keeps it refreshing. So out of ten I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a six. I mean it's a well brewed beer. I mean it's not my favourite wheat beer and that, but I haven't drunk it for fifteen years and I'm quite enjoying it, it's quite nice. I still think it's uh, a bit overpriced. For what it is, but yeah, I mean, I think is it, but it's actually it's actually brewed in Belgium and then distributed. So at least that's one good thing. It's not exactly brewed, like say, in the UK under license. This is brewed in Belgium. Does it say where? Not really. Doesn't give us any other details. It just says, of course, it's specially produced for Aldi stores and then. Oh no, here we go. Palm. So it's brewed and bottled in Belgium by Palm NV SA. So there you go. So I'm just taking a little look at that, but yeah. Um, what would I give that out of 10? Oh well. It's, I just feel it's quite disappointing actually. I had kind of high hopes compared to um, with the, the last round. The St. Pierre just kind of obviously nicked the win from left. But yeah, this is just doesn't seem to be in the same league and I'd be interested to see whether this is actually the same brewer or it's a different brewer that makes the other beer than this one. But, I mean obviously you can see that they're, they're trying to kind of obviously kind of copy it a wee bit. You can see there's a slight kind of 
copy within the kind of the label and the kind of designs and things of like that. A bit cheeky, but anyway, that's how they're doing it. Um, if you take it as a, a competitor to whole garden, it's 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 way down. If you take it as an isolated beer, that's okay. Um, I would have given it a five. I'd give it a five, good average, nice beer to drink, fine, not a problem. But to say it's kind of to, it's designed to kind of compete with Whole Garden, and you can really see now the kind of colour differences, Whole Garden and uh, Hovington. But. I'm actually going to give it a four and a half. It's just slightly below average, just because it's lacking the wheat flavour profiles for a wheat beer, and it's supposed to be a wheat. I mean, if it was an ale, then okay, fine, you can get away with more generalisation. But they're basically promoting it as a wheat beer, and it's lacking the kind of wheat flavours even more so than the the whole garden. And of course, obviously, it hasn't got any kind of wheat or grain smells in the aroma either it's more kind of caramel and malt so yeah well, that's quite disappointing and then of course some of the flavor profiles aren't really working together they're kind of clashing slightly and it just makes it just a slightly unpleasant kind of uh, drink it, it, well i'm not going to say unpleasant but it's making it less pleasant as it should be you know it's not as pleasant as it could be because of that and yeah, I'm going to give it four and a half. I'm going to basically drop it down below average just because of how it's marketed. It's marketed as a wheat beer and it's just not delivering. So, between the kind of big brands, it's now one all. So, I think I have a triple here from Aldi that I will be doing and that's going to be the decider. But what I'm going to have to do is obviously look at a couple of big brand triples. Obviously, I think Leff will be one, but I'll look at some of the others as well. And I'll bring them all in from that point of view. I'll try and bring as many of the triples in as possible to kind of give it a chance. And it also gives a chance to look at some other kind of big brand triples and see the differences between them as well. So, And there's a better understanding between, like, of course, like the, the doubles and the triples and the quadruples and things like that. And we can look into it and explain what they all actually are and what it actually mean. And also kind of looks at kind of alcohol kind of content and volume because that plays a big part within the kind of the doubles, the triples and the quadruples and we can look into that and kind of answer any kind of questions that people might have them well, well why do we have that and why is it like that and yeah, hopefully we can explain and kind of clear up people's um, kind of doubts or questions they might have and maybe kind of help them to understand how the Belgian system kind of works a bit better. But yeah, I would say 1-0, um, in this case to Hogarden versus Hoffle again. one all in the overall Aldi versus the big brands. Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, it's a nice refreshing beer, the Whole Garden. I think it's slightly a bit overpriced for what it is. Nice ref refreshing beer, but it could be um, better priced. This, 2 99 it's it's an attractive price for a big bottle. Offers you the promise, but head to head, no. It's, it's hard to believe that there's actually a lot more flavour in the whole garden than there is in the Hovigan. It's kind of weak on flavour and the flavours they do have just aren't right. So yeah. So four and a half versus six. Thanks for watching, cheers and bye for now.